friends and welcome back to another foodie Friday today we're gonna be cooking one of my most common dinners this dinner is super easy it's affordable it's a great weeknight meal and it makes a lot of food for a little bit of money and it's a crowd pleaser so we're gonna go ahead and get started today we're gonna be making turkey meatballs with some roasted potatoes and of course I have to make Brussels sprouts for my family because honestly, I think it's the only vegetable they eat. So let's go ahead and get started. For today's recipe, you will need a cup of chicken broth. You'll need a package of stovetop instant stuffing, the potatoes of your choice. Today we're using the little potatoes, some Brussels sprouts, two eggs, and some seasoning as well as one pound of ground white turkey. We're gonna start off today with the item that needs to cook the most and that's the potatoes. So we're gonna turn on the oven to 400 degrees and then we're going to open up our potatoes. Now, like I said, I'm using potatoes from the Little Potato Company. If you have not tried these yet, I would highly recommend them. They are super delicious and oddly buttery. I don't know any other way to describe them, but my family is in love. So first I'm just giving them a good rinse, scrubbing them down with my hands, any ones that feel extra gritty, making sure to pop off any growth and getting them prepared to cook. This part's important, don't skip this part. You definitely wanna wash them. And now we're going to cut them. So depending on the size, we're going to either quarter them or cut them into eight. So, well not quarter, here I cut them into six and some of the larger ones I'll cut into eight. The goal is to cut them into bite-sized pieces, almost like a potato hash and they'll be ready to roast. You wanna make sure you're cutting them in approximately the same size, that way they're cooking uh, evenly, as evenly as you possibly can. Potatoes are obviously not going to be the same size, so they won't all be perfectly cut or perfectly the same, but you wanna cut them as close to uh, the same size as possible. And get them into a mixing bowl so that we can season them. And seasoning is gonna be up to you. So I'm starting with some extra virgin olive oil here. Just getting them nice and drenched. You want them to roast. Then we're using some Himalayan pink salt. This salt is the best for you. We're using a little bit of garlic powder as well as some onion powder. And finally, we're going to use a little bit of ranch seasoning. Now, typically, I would also use some Lowry's, however, I, Lowry's season salt that is. However, I am out, which is kind of crazy in my house. If you know me in real life, you know I put Lowry's on everything. So the fact that I don't have Lowry's in my house, I guess, is not shocking because we use it, but uh, shocking at the same time. So. Once you've given your potatoes a really good mix and all of them are coated with both the olive oil and the seasonings, you're gonna grab yourself a roasting pan. And this is how I roast my potatoes. I cover the sheet in tin foil because it makes cleanup extremely easy, but it's up to you, you don't have to. If you decide not to use a tin foil, just make sure that you spray your pan so your potatoes don't stick. And now we're going to just lay the potatoes out across the pan in an even row and spread them out so that they're all, um, you know, single layers so that way they can roast appropriately. So these potatoes are great not only for just a side dish, but they're really great in the morning as, um, like I said, a hash. So what we like to do is we take whatever potatoes are left, we'll toss them in the frying pan in the morning with a little bit of butter, and then we'll put a couple of drippy eggs over them. They're absolutely delicious. So the next thing that we're gonna work on now that we have the potatoes in the oven is the actual turkey meatball. Now, I learned this recipe actually Man, like 12, no, longer than that. How old is Michaela? My daughter's about to be 16. Can I, I, wait, am I really that old? Oh my God. <laughs> my daughter's really about to be 16. I really am that old. Uh, yeah, so I learned this recipe like 
15 and a half years ago, 15 years ago, uh, when I was doing a weight loss program, uh, formerly known as Weight Watchers, right after I had had my daughter, my very first child, and that's actually where I met my first mom friends. Shout out to Amy and Lori. I, I don't know if you watched my channel, but shout out. And it was a recipe that was discussed in one of the meetings by another mom or woman who was a part of the program. And I went home and made it and it was super simple. Now since then, there are some things that I do that are not, um, you know, diet if you will. I use the whole egg versus just the egg white. Um, and we use cranberry sauce as a dipping sauce, but you can omit the cranberry sauce and you can just use egg white and not use the egg yolk and that does help to reduce the fat and calories of the turkey balls. But I couldn't tell you what any of the nutrition you know, items are and I don't have a recipe for this one because it's just something I've you know, kept in my head over the years. Um, I don't have a recipe to give you uh, for any of the things that I'm doing today. I apologize, but hopefully, you know, my directions are pretty simple. Um, and if you have any questions, never hesitate to mention it down in the comments below. So we're gonna go ahead and get the turkey balls made and uh, we'll get those into the oven as well. Man, 16. Who knew I was that old? Now that my mind has been sufficiently blown, we're gonna go ahead and get started with the turkey balls. Uh, so first thing you're gonna do is open up your ground turkey. Now, typically, I would be doubling this, so I would do two of everything, but you're going to open up your package of instant stuffing as well. And then you're gonna use a cup of chicken broth. If you don't have chicken broth, you can just use a cup of water. That's perfectly fine. This just gives it a little bit more depth in the flavor. And then you're going to use two eggs, two whole eggs. However, like I said before, you could use just the uh, egg white if you wanted to. And now you're going to get a pan. I'm using a cupcake pan. However, you could just make these balls and put them in a Pyrex or some kind of baking dish. Make sure that you grease up your pan really well. And you're going to mix up your meatball. Now notice that I sprayed my pan and prepped my pan before I started this job. And that's so that when I make the meatballs, they just easily go from my messy, messy hand into the ready uh, cupcake pan. This typically will yield 12 uh, meatballs. However, I made mine a little bit larger. Um, that's, it depends on, you know, your beef, the I'm sorry, the ground chicken that you get. Sometimes there's a little more, sometimes there's a little less, but typically it will yield about 12 meatballs. And then you're just gonna pop them into the oven. Now I don't set the timer, I just kind of check them uh, and I'll watch for them to be finished. But since the Brussels sprouts are not going to take as long as the potatoes and the meatballs, this is a really great opportunity to clean up the kitchen of what you've made, you know, what mess you've made so far. This is probably my biggest tip. If you are new to the kitchen, if you're not one that cooks regularly, clean as you go. I try to teach this to my kids all the time. I, I am trying to get my kiddos to start cooking dinner more often so that they can learn to cook. I didn't learn to cook until I moved out, not because my mom wasn't you know, trying to get me to learn, it's just that she did all the cooking and I find myself doing the exact same thing, but I really want my kids to learn, especially because they're constantly saying, mom, we love your cooking. And I'm like, well, you gotta learn how to do it. What happens if you end up with someone who doesn't know how to cook, right? You're gonna end up at my house every night for dinner. So that's definitely something I'm trying to help instill in my kids is how to cook. And on top of that, cleaning up as you go to make your life a lot easier. We do have a rule in my house that my kiddos always do clean up after dinner. So they do, you know, the the dishes, they clean up the kitchen, they put all the food away. They're really, really great about that. But um, cleaning up as you go can definitely make the job easier, no matter who it is doing the job. Okay. 
Okay, so now that the meatballs are in the oven along with our potatoes, the last thing for us to do is to get our Brussels sprouts prepped and ready to go. Now, I'm just going to give you a forewarning. I do not wash my Brussels sprouts. Some people might find that to be absolutely disgusting and that is 100% your prerogative to feel that way. I don't wash my Brussels sprouts because I feel like it makes them very soggy and I'm just not a fan of what that does to the texture of the Brussels sprout. We're going to cook them at very high heat so whatever bacteria may be on there is going to get cooked out for the most part, I feel. Might be wrong, I'm not a biologist but I'm also not a germaphobe so I have been making my Brussels sprouts this way forever and we have been perfect fine so if you want to wash them by all means go ahead but we are not going to wash them we're going to open them up we're going to get them quartered so they're really big as you can see and you could roast them like this you could have them there's all kinds of things you can do with Brussels sprouts if you're not a Brussels sprout lover you could definitely pick a different um, vegetable but I've been told that you either love Brussels sprouts or you hate them I don't know but my family for the most part all it's five of us that love them, one little baby who doesn't like anything, and my husband who depends on the day. But um, we're gonna pan fry these up with a lot of butter, a lot of seasoning, and they are delicious and tender and irresistible if you ask me. So let's get them cut up. Now, like I mentioned before, Brussels sprouts seem to be one of those vegetables where you either love them or you hate them. I kind of think broccoli is very similar to that. They have a very, very strong taste and they can be very bitter depending on how they're cooked. However, I promise you if they are made properly, they can be some of the most delicious foods and they're really good for you. So. Give this recipe a try. If you're already a Brussels sprout lover, you will love these, but if you are not, give it a shot. You might like them. Uh, we're getting started by cutting off the stems, whatever part is left on the stems. This part's important because that is a very tough piece of the Brussels sprout. And now we're gonna quarter these. They're really big and you could cut them just in half, put them on a baking sheet, toss them in the oven and let them roast like everything else in there. But we like to pan saute them. They get really tender and delicious and the butter just brings out the flavor of the Brussels sprout. Because they do have a bitter taste, the butter just makes them delicious. So super important tip when you are cooking Brussels sprouts, once you have them all cut up and quartered, you're going to have a lot of lo loose leaves like this. Um, a lot of loose leaves that are just kind of hanging out. They look like they should be tossed. Um, do not throw those away you guys make sure that when you are cooking your Brussels sprouts you put all those little bits in all of the little leaves now not the little ends that we cut off those those we're gonna throw away those are those are yucky but the little leaves are probably some of my favorite parts of a Brussels sprout especially when we cook them because they get a little bit crispy and um, brown they're just the best parts it's kind of like the burnt edges of a mac and cheese like it's the best part, it has the most flavor. So we're gonna go ahead and get these on the stove. Our uh, potatoes are cooking, I can smell them. It smells fantastic in here. Um, I don't really have a time necessarily for how long you're going to cook everything. You wanna just kinda keep an eye, it depends on how big you make your meatballs, but typically the meatballs will need to cook for anywhere from 25 to 35 minutes. You can just kinda put, um, you know, check the outside, they should be kind of browned and, um, you know, uh, uh, maybe a little bit crispy. And um, you can cut one open if you want to check. It is poultry, it is turkey, so you want to make sure it's cooked all the way through. Uh, but you don't want to overcook them because they can dry out really, really quickly. And then your potatoes, you can check just by putting a fork in them to see if they are soft. We like ours a little bit on the crispier side, so we leave them in for a decent amount of time. Um, and once the turkey balls are ready to come out, I'll actually pop on the air fryer on the oven just to crisp everything up. So we're gonna get these Brussels sprouts going on the stove so they can cook, and we'll check on our meat and potatoes. You'll want a large sauteing pan for this because you'll want your Brussels sprouts to be able to lay down in one single layer. So get yourself a really big pan. And for this recipe, we're gonna use a whole stick of butter. That's right, 
one whole stick of butter. Don't judge. Now listen, before you come for me for my butter, you can absolutely do less butter than this. You don't even have to do any butter. You could just use a little bit of olive oil. You could use a little bit of um, a, a spray if you would prefer that. My family likes butter. I don't put it in every single thing, but for these Brussels sprouts, I have to do it because it is what makes them the best. So we have this about once a week, and this is divided among you know five to six people, depending on the day. So we're not all eating a stick of butter, I promise, but you just have to use the butter. I mean, I mean, I guess you don't have to, but I do. You wanna let your butter melt and he let your pan heat up so that when you put your Brussels sprouts in, it instantly is cooking. You don't want to put the Brussels sprouts in a cold pan because then they have to stay in there too long to start to cook up and they might get a little too soggy. So we're gonna let that pan heat up. This pan is already bubbling. I don't know if you can see that, but we're gonna spread out those Brussels sprouts in as much of a thin layer as possible and let them cook. Don't mess with them too much. Let them start to brown. While we're doing that, I'm gonna go ahead and check on the turkey balls, which were ready. We're gonna get those out and it is smelling so good in here. Okay, my friends, our turkey meatballs are out of the oven and they are going to rest a few minutes. We've just got a couple more minutes on the Brussels sprouts and the potatoes should be ready to come out. I'm just gonna pop this over to air fry to let them kind of crisp up a little bit more and then we're gonna season up our Brussels sprouts and it's almost time to eat. My mouth is watering. Now if your oven doesn't have an air fry option but you want to make your potatoes a little bit crispier, you can just turn on the broiler for a few minutes. Just keep an extra close eye on them because that goes a lot faster. Um, but we're gonna let our Brussels sprouts pop there as you saw and I'm gonna season these with the exact same seasonings that I used on the potatoes. Again, if I had my Lowry's that would go on there as well but Ranch seasoning is my other secret ingredient, especially on chicken. My kids are always like, why is this chicken so delicious? It's the ranch, folks. I cannot take credit, it's the ranch. But we're gonna let these Brussels sprouts saute and leave them alone as much as you can. Spread them out, then let them sit because what will happen is, as you see here, they get really brown on one side and they are so delicious you guys they're not burnt not at all they're just really sauteed and yummy and these are pretty much ready to go so I'm gonna go ahead and grab a serving bowl another serving bowl that I picked up at home goods and we're gonna get these into the bowl they just slide right out make sure you get all that butter so delicious my mouth is watering as I'm editing this <laughs> even though I already ate them I'm ready for some more and then you're gonna grab your potatoes out of the oven. Now, what you're gonna look for is as crispy of a potato as you like. Like I said, I don't have any exact times or measurements. It's really gonna depend on how crispy you like your potatoes. We like them a little bit more on the crispy side. So we're gonna get these into a serving dish and it is almost time to eat. We like to eat our turkey meatballs with cranberry sauce, so I buy jellied cranberry sauce and just kind of break it up. My boys will eat it on the side. They don't eat their turkey meatball with the cranberry sauce, but they eat the cranberry sauce all on its own. Um, my oldest son, Aiden, likes to eat his with ketchup, but I'm pretty sure he eats everything with ketchup. Pretty sure the kid would brush his teeth with ketchup if I allowed him to. But honestly, the if you like um, cranberry sauce the cranberry sauce is where it's at it is so good and it brings a little sweet touch to the turkey meatballs and just screams Thanksgiving so here is our meal all done and ready to go looking absolutely delicious super easy I think all in all this entire meal probably took about 45 minutes perfect for those busy weeknights
Okay, my friends, that is it for today's Cook With Me video. I'm gonna go sit down and enjoy my dinner. I'm actually here all by myself. I cooked this all for myself because my family, uh, they're all gone. Danny and the boys are camping on a boys only trip. Michaela is off at a friend's house for the next, for a sleepover tonight. I pick her up tomorrow afternoon, so I'm here by myself, which is both glorious and really, really sad. I'm gonna sit down and eat a meal by myself, which is going to be interesting. I haven't done that in a really long time. It's just me and Charlie and the kitties, but I'm really excited that my boys are getting to have this experience with their daddy. So I'm gonna go ahead and make uh, some, make use of the time. I'm gonna read a book, watch a movie, enjoy this meal, go sit on the porch. I'm probably gonna go sit out on the deck and enjoy my dinner. Um, if I were making this for my whole family, I would have doubled this meal. So everything that I did today would probably feed four, um, but if you, three to four, but if you have a bigger family like I do, definitely wanna make sure you double the recipe. So these uh, turkey meatballs do freeze really well as, um, as well. So if you wanna make a big batch of them while you're doing it, that's great too. You can pop them in the freezer. It's probably what I'm gonna do for the other um, 10, nine <laughs> that I have. Save a couple for tomorrow and then pop the rest in the freezer. So I hope that you enjoyed this video. I always have a lot of fun filming these and I really appreciate all of the wonderful feedback I'm getting on these videos. So I hope that you enjoy this one as well. If you do, I would love for you to consider giving it a thumbs up and I'd love to have you subscribe and come back for more. And I will see you guys in the next one. Have a great day and happy eating. Bye guys. Mm -hmm.